Hello everyone, today is an exciting day. We are looking at the V4 of the Pro. Um, so this one is almost final. There's some small detail we're gonna change, but you're gonna see just looking at it, you can notice a lot of different things, the, the fenders, the folding mechanism, uh, and internally it's also completely different. So uh, let's check it out. If we start by the fenders, um, you can see now it's extending all the way to the back, so it's really gonna protect against the water. Again, if you remember on the V3, it was stopping here, so the water could go through uh, the footrest. That was not easy to do. We had to make the forks uh, longer, the rear one, obviously, um, and do a complete redesign of the fender, of the, of the fork, so, and the rear suspension, the rubber block too. But now there's a built-in stopper, so it's impossible for the fender to touch the footrest mechanically. It's gonna stop, uh, even if you remove the suspension completely, um, the shape of the rear fork is gonna block it. So that's great. We kept the same weight that it's attached to the forks because that was great. If you remember, it's two screws from the top. What we changed though is the actual bracket. Why? Uh, just because it looked way cleaner like this and you can see that the angle of the bracket is the same angle as the rear footrest, which is the same angle as the neck. Uh, so it's consistent and it's the same thing in the front. And again, having small details like this, you might not notice it when you look at the scooter, but it just feels right, right? So that's really exciting. Finally, we have a great fenders. That was hard to do. Uh, if we move more towards the deck, what is different now? Uh, we have new lights on the side. Um, you will not notice it, but those ones allow us to do a lot more customization and they're also more stable. So we had to change the box uh, light inside. This is the module that control all the lights. Um, so a small improvement, really more related to bugs uh, and also the turning signal are, are different now. I'll show you later. If we continue up, we have a new neck. This one is stronger than before. It's beefier. And uh, the way that we're making it by CNC is also completely different. Uh, we are gaining maybe two points on the factor of safety. That means whatever it means for people uh, listening, but uh, that's reassuring to see. You want to, to hear that. And uh, this neck can withstand something like, I think 600 kilos. Uh, so it's, it's, it's never gonna snap on you. And then we have the charging port here. That's the same as before. This one is working great. It's the same on the, as the CD with the wires a bit thicker because this one's gonna be charging at five amp. Uh, so that's a lot more current. So the wires need to be thicker to withstand this charge. Um, if we go to the front, my favorite part, the locking mechanism. You can see it's a completely redesigned um, design and it looked great. So right now we took inspiration from the model of the Ghost. So you can see a big hook in the front. What we changed though is we made it easier. So on the Ghost, we have a quick release at the back. Now we put it at the front, a button uh, with the orange accent because that's our colors and it just looked better. And I love seeing that anodized button, it's, so, it's great. This model, there's maybe 600 kilometers on it. I did ride it a lot. That's the one that we show you, uh, showed you the seat on. So I, I did put a lot of mileage on it and I never adjusted the full aim mechanics yet. That's the first time this happened to me. Uh, usually, you know, you get a sample, you always need to adjust it, tweak it a little bit, at least two, three times wh while it's like settling in. Um, this one never, and it's still rock solid. And the beauty of it is that you can open it like this <laughs> with two fingers. That's that's incredible. You know, usually if you look at the city or even the old design that we had that was going on each side, you need to have a technique almost. So you like grab it and like, eh, like this to open it. Um, so that's great. Even your, your grandmother can open it now. Uh, not that they're not strong, but you know, <laughs> that's a beauty. We are putting this on the rig uh, at our factory. We're just making sure that it's even stronger than what we had before. Um, but so far it's, uh, we did, I think 85,000 cycle as this morning and uh, it's, still, it's still perfect. So that's pretty encouraging. I think we're gonna put that on the Air and the City 2023 that we're gonna show you soon. It's gonna be just minor improvement like this and maybe the turn signal, I don't know. Stay tuned, you're gonna know. Really happy about it. We changed the bearing structure too inside and the way that this whole piece stay together uh, and the direction too that go in. Before it was four millimeter uh, thick, now it's seven millimeter thick. Not because it broke, but because we had space to make it bigger. So you might as well make it bigger, right? Um, so that's really great. If we go here, we got rid of the orange suspension. Now it's black with the original brand on it. Uh, that looked way better. The other one just looked hand painted and same thing with those cap for the wheel. The other one were orange, like a cheap orange that was not even matching our shade. So that's great. Um, 
I think this is not the final suspension. I really want something with an adjustment here because if someone's super heavy go on the scooter, right now it's gonna bottom out. So I want the scooter to fit for someone who is 80 kilos and someone who is 150 kilos, right? That'll be great. And if we look at the fender, same thing. It goes all the way to the forks and really protecting now the suspension. If you look on the other model, it was completely dirty because you can imagine it was all going there. Um, so that's great. Same thing for this one. We had to make the forks longer to make this uh, the fender reach the, the forks. And also because of this, then you change the whole geometry of the scooter, right? Because the center of the wheel is no longer aligned with the stem. So we had to change the right angle and I'll spare you all the details, but it was a mess to do. At least now it's done. Um, so that's great. And that's how it's gonna be on the final one uh, shape-wise. Again, the suspension, probably gonna change it. And it just looked way cleaner. Same thing with the bracket. You see, now it's aligned, it's the same angle. It's really mathematical, you know? We are scientifics at Apollo. <laughs> so that's pretty much it for the bottom of the scooter. If we go up, uh, we have the throttle. Those one are the reworked one, the one that you see on the new city. It's the V7 of the throttle. We're gonna change them. On the final unit, it's gonna be the V8 that we call it. Because yes, there's eight versions of the same throttle. It's hard to do. The new one, I did test them. I have them actually, I'll go grab them. So those are the new throttle, the one that we call the V8. You can see now it's on the city handlebar. That's a little teaser. It's gonna be on the city 2023, maybe. And uh, the air as well. Those one are incredible compared to the old one. The buttons now are plastic, so way easier to press when you have glove or just with your bare ends. Compared to before, it was rubber and really small, the button, so you really needed to, to push it exactly at uh, the right spot for it to engage. So that's now way better. Someone blind could press on them. That's great. And also it's way smoother. Uh, so you know with the city we had problems of throttle sticking. Why? It's because the spring inside was not um, ideal for this kind of usage and also you can see that one part of the throttle move while the other one doesn't right um, there's friction between those two parts so in our old mold and with the factory that we were working with um, the tolerance for, for plastic molding was not uh, excellent or up to our standard on the new one it's next level this is like uh, you, you can you can see it it's <laughs> it's great so this is a handmade sample 3d printed uh, just confirm that we like the shape that we like how it feel and the mold for this is going to be ready in five days and that's what we're going to be putting on the pro uh, and i'm really confident about those ones we went with the best factory to do throttles or just parts in general it's a factory making all the parts for electric bicycle the brake handle the throttle the the cadence sensor for uh, for the pedal, there's also the, the motors. It's literally the best factory that we can go with for throttle. If those one doesn't work, I don't know what to do. That's like my final attempt to make a throttle. Like I mentioned, this is a V8 of the throttle. We went through eight different iterations to get to this point. So that's why I feel so confident about it. Let us know in the comment what you think. Uh, I personally love it, as you can see, but uh, maybe you have other suggestions. So let us know. We also have the phone holder. So it's the same as the last one because it worked great with the little dial that we have here that now you can twist to tight compared to before on the V1 and V2, it was only a button that you push up or down to release. Again, I'm not satisfied with this. I really want uh, something that, that's already proven. So again, we are working on a partnership with someone that you're gonna see on the V5. This is a V4, there's gonna be a V5 and there's gonna be a V6 after that. Uh, the V5, there's a major improvement that you, I won't reveal now, and the V6 even more, something that all of you were complaining about. I think you're gonna like it. If we go on the side, turning signal, same as last time. Uh, brake handle, same as last time as well. The speaker as well, it, this one is pretty loud. It sounds okay. Uh, and what we're gonna change though is the brake handle. Um, so as you know, all those components are custom, right? There's nothing off the shelf with the scooter. So throttle is the V8 of the throttle, right? They are tested. The full name mechanics, while well, we put it on the rig, it's the same design as the Ghost. I, I really have a lot of confidence in this one. Motors, it's one of the best brands out there. Tires, CST, self healing. What I'm trying to say is that all the components were tested on the city or other model, and I feel really confident about it. The one that I never tested or was not tested right on the market is the brake handle. It's something new, custom that fit the Pro. And can see it's beautiful. It fit perfectly the design. I won't take the chance of doing a custom brake handle. It's too important for the scooter. Um, so I'm gonna go with the same brake handle as the City. Uh, they're great, they look great. The wires are invisible. There's a little bell integrated. So 
What I like about it is now you can either choose the horn, which is it's super loud, uh, I'll show you, or you can have the bell, you know? So you, someone that you honk at on the bicycle path won't have a cardiac arrest, you know? You can decide either ding ding or like, hey! Because we have this choice now on the horn and I'll show you with the app, we can change it to a few options. Um, so for the handlebar, bar, that's pretty much it. Uh, you can see too, compared to before, I love this. Let me know in the comment what you think. It's gray now, right? So before this part was black to fit with uh, the forks, uh, the front and back, because we want all the extremities of the scooter to be black. Um, it make it a bit lighter design-wise, but I thought that this is the extremity of the scooter, the handlebar. So the headset to match better with the, the stem, it should be gray, and I love it. It just looks so good. And if you look at from the front with the logo here, a little bit scratch, we're gonna fix that. Overall, it fit way better, and it's like the city. The city, if you look at, it's the same principle, the forks are black, it looked just way smoother. So. I love this. Let me know in the comment if you prefer it black. And same thing for the swing arm that we have here, right? On the V3, I, I was telling you how beautiful it was, gray painted, like just a, the finish of the paint was beautiful. Now it's black. Personally, I prefer black. I think it looked better. It fit better with the scooter. Uh, but again, let me know in the comment and well, we can do whatever we want, right? So that's pretty much it for the V4. Now I'm gonna open it. We're gonna look inside to see what's different. We replace the controller differently. Again, there's a new light box and I'll also show you the light and the stem so, because finally we were able to match the shade of the deck and the stem. So that's pretty exciting. So let's check it out. So now we're gonna look inside the scooter. The first thing you notice is the controller change position. Right now it's under the box light and it's also outside of the scooter. So if we look under it, you're gonna see that the controller is sticking out and that allowed us to add around 20% more torque. Uh, it's because of the heat that we needed to, to do this and we did the same thing on the official Phantom V3. There's a cutout under the frame for this. So don't worry about the controller being waterproofed and it is waterproofed. You can run the controller underwater, literally. We tried it because the old PCB is uh, like, there's a layer of um, epoxy on it. There's a, like, it's, it's a solid block inside. So that's great for waterproofness, but that means you cannot fix it if it breaks inside. <laughs> Again, you're covered for the controller. So maybe get the extended warranty from us. <laughs> so that controller is great. This is a Mac 1. On the final version, it's gonna be the Mac 2 and it's gonna be orange. We can put a picture of what it looked, uh, the controller. Orange look way better with the scooter and with the grid fits super well. And the Mac 2 is the 20% stronger controller. There's just more amp uh, of discharge to get more torque, basically. So that's great. On top of that, we have the light box. So you can see the overall structure inside the body is way better. Uh, and it's gonna allow for a better cool down. All the connectors now are waterproofed. You can see we have the connector for the IoT, the connectors for the lights, uh, connectors for the charging port, the front CUB of the stem. The connectors for the battery now are pretty beefy too, so that's great. And we have uh, the waterproof connector for the smart BMS as well. Because as you know, there's a smart BMS in the battery that's going to tell you all the details you want to know about the battery. So it's just great to have those fancy connectors, right? Um, the only thing that remains not waterproofed right now, uh, connector-wise, is the connector of the front motor. So the problem I'm having, you can imagine there's no wires, right, from outside. So to pass the rear motor to inside the body, super easy, you pass it here, it's going inside the forks, and uh, it's going directly to the controller, right? Pretty straightforward. For the front motor, you need to pass it here, it goes up the swing arm, inside the neck, inside the, the direction tube, inside the neck, and then go in the body. So you cannot have a gigantic hole because this is what it looked like for the, the connectors of the motor. It's so big, right? You don't want a big holes like this on the neck structure-wise, right? It's just not great. And this would be very hard to pass during assembly. So we are working to maybe find a new type of connector or reworking the structure of the neck to allow such connector to be inside because those one, uh, well, that's unacceptable. It just like, doesn't make sense that the whole scooter have uh, fancy connectors like this. And for the motor, which is critical, the connectors are so cheap. So we're gonna change that. But that's the only one remaining that uh, is not up to our standards right now. Except that the battery is the same. That's a Samsung uh, battery with, uh, I think it's 40 T's inside. The, the actual cells, that's literally the best one you can get, 21700, obviously, like all our scooters. And if you look at the lights, that's the last point that I really don't like about it. Right now it's holding on the side with glue and you can see it's pretty flimsy, like I can move them by pressing on it. It's like thermal paste that they put, put uh, this on the body and then you have the layer of plastic that's gonna be over it and then you put the deck, right? So for a regular company, that would be more than uh, fine, you know, they would be happy with that. But you know us, always thinking about the small details. So inside this rail, that again is the, the diffuser for the light, uh, we're gonna be putting um, 
a, a slot that you're going to be able to slide the lights in. So per assembly, it's consistent because like this, it depends on the workers, how we stick it. And you know, it can be like more up or more, more down on a certain scooter. And we don't want the factory to make those kind of mistakes. So we need to fix it design wise, right? So by having a slot like this, it's going to be more consistent, uh, even more waterproof. And it's just going to feel even more premium if you need to open the, the body of the scooter. Really excited about that, it's a small thing, but the problem I have is when the LED detach from the, the deck of the scooter or the side, you see the, the dot of the, the COB light. And if like uh, at the front is more towards the body, you won't see the dot, so it's really inconsistent. So at least by having it all the way stuck on this, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be the same thing. You just look at the, the LED light and it looks beautiful all the way around the body. So. Love this. So that's it for inside the body of the scooter. If there is anything that you would like to suggest on how we should place things, let us know. Personally, I think it's pretty good. Everything is waterproof from the controller, the light box, the connectors, the battery. And remember that last time I showed you on the actual deck, we have also a gasket all around it, the, the orange thing that you see here. So the scooter is gonna be rated IP66. That's the best rating on the market. Nothing is close to that. So I'm happy with that, but I'm sure you're gonna have great suggestions. So let us know in the comments. So now my favorite part. You can see that finally the shade of the COB of the stem is matching the one of the deck. So it just looked more consistent and it looked beautiful. It's a bit more bluish than before but I think it looked great. And right now, this means that we can finally decide the color of the stem and the one of the body. Right now, the app don't allow us to do it because we still need to do some work uh, in the back end. So you can decide the color of, again, the stem, the body, you can decide the brake color. So when you brake now, it's red, right? Well, you can decide it's uh, yellow. We're gonna show you all the color and also the turning signal color. So if I do it now, it's yellow uh, as it should be. You're gonna be able to change that as well. That being said, the rear light here always gonna remain red on that portion for safety reason. Um, and it's also, when I apply it, you can see it's becoming brighter, right? It's passing from a dim red to brighter. Uh, I think on the final sample, I'm gonna make it flash because that's like, you cannot really see it. Like you need to, to know that it's becoming brighter basically. So maybe the rear part here can flash. Maybe it's an option in the app. Let us know in the comment what you prefer. So you can see this is the first color, yellow uh, of the deck. That's pretty cool. If we continue, we have green, we have blue. This one is pretty cool too. And then finally, we have the, there's somebody changing the, the color on the app, so that's why uh, we're having, techni <laughs> having technical issues. But violet, and that's my favorite one. After the white, uh, it looked pretty cool. I think it's like the cyber truck vibe, you know, even there's no violet, but I don't know, it looked like a really cyberpunk. I love it. Uh, it fits well with the gray too. And again, you can see that now it's always white in the front. You're gonna be able to tune it to whatever you want. So now if I break, it's always red on the side here. So we're gonna go through those colors as well. You can have yellow, you can have green, you can have blue. And lastly, you can also have violet, which now would stay the same because the, the basic color of the deck was violet. So that's pretty cool. Again, we need those colors to be embedded in the controller for you to choose. You won't have access to a spectrum of color that you can decide like the precise shade that you want. Um, so if there's any color missing, in your opinion, let us know. Obviously, you're gonna be able to turn all the lights off if you want to. So you decide if you want them on or off. We are also working on an option to dim them because that's really bright and it's consuming batteries. So keep that in mind. You're gonna be able to turn them off. And lastly, there's a turning signal color. So the first one, well, it was uh, yellow. Now we changed it to red. That's pretty cool. Yellow, this is a basic option. We have green too. the blue one and the violet one. Again, the, the, the turning signal for me, this should be orange, but we want to give you the choice of customization. And if we look at the back, that's what is different with this sample compared to the V3. Now the turning signal are starting from the middle of the tail and going to the direction that you want it to. Before it was starting from the end of the tail, but it was going so fast that the rear tail was always yellow, basically. You couldn't tell if it was left or right. So at least starting from the middle, if you are driving a car, driving behind you, it's gonna be a bit easier to see. Again, on top of that, you have the turning signal on the handlebar. So I think that's pretty good. 
I think I'm gonna change it that it's always blinking at the back, so it's even faster. Uh, and on the side, we're gonna keep that cool motion, but yeah, maybe that little strip here with this one, it's always gonna blink when you activate it to be even more, to put even more evidence on it. So that's pretty much it for the light. Again, let us know in the comment if you think something is missing. If you like them, don't like them. I'm sure you will though. So that's it for the lights. So the other thing that we changed on the scooter is the turn off and turn on sound. Before it was a loud turbine noise. Uh, that was unpleasant when it was light, late at night. Um, so now we give you the option in the app to put it on or off, and we also change the sound. So right now, if I turn in off, you're gonna see there's gonna be no sound. It's gonna be like this. That's pretty much it. If I turn it back on, same thing. So that's the discrete mode, right? But if you want to be loud and everyone knows that you have the Apple Pro, uh, you can change the sound. We are connecting to the app, doing our magic in the back end. <laughs> So now I'm gonna turn it back on and you're gonna hear the noise. So you can see this sound is very loud. We are working on the app to try to adjust the sound, but so far it's not successful. So it's either on or off the sound. Maybe we're gonna add two or three other choice. Um, the memory inside the controller is limited with all the, the color option and everything we have. So we need to decide the sound. The one that you heard now won't be the final one. We have a way better one coming. And if I turn it off, it's gonna be in the same line like this and it's gonna be a bit longer to really do like smoother I guess uh, and the thing that you might have noticed before when you were turning on the v3 the v2 or the v1 it was a green line turning around it now it's a, a light that start here and go all the way on the body and then up the stem it look way better and make more sense than a green thing turning like this so let's see. Right now, the COB light was uh, put on the wrong way, so it's doing the motion and starting from the top going down. Uh, it's gonna be from the down going up uh, on the final one, obviously. So that's it for the turn on and turn off sound. Uh, the only other thing remaining is the, well, there's the alert sound that you can set now. It's pretty cool, you're gonna see. And also the horn sound. So right now, if I look at the horn, hey! It's Kevin from the warehouse, our uh, warehouse manager that is screaming, hey, because it's funny. Uh, and you have different options that are not as aggressive. So the first one was Kevin screaming. The second one, uh, it's a, a bell like this. Again, you're gonna have an, a bell now on the brake handle like we have on the city. So you can decide to go for something not as loud as this. And uh, also the horn sounds gonna get louder. Uh, right now there's a bug when you listen to your music and activate the horn, it's getting the, anyway, I'll spare you the details, but the, hum, the horn's gonna be louder on the final version. So those are, are the two choices that you have for horn. If you have any idea or suggestion, again, let us know in the comment or join the beta group and leave us comments there. It's gonna be easier to, to keep track of all of this, but uh, yeah, so someone screaming, hey, for an Easter egg and just a nice little bell like this. Um, and lastly, there's the alarm system sound that you can uh, decide. So the other thing you can change on the scooter is the alarm sound, right? So we're gonna put it in lock mode by doing this. That's a new feature that is included. That's not true. So the first sound, very aggressive, but that's what you want, right? It's gonna be the classic alarm. Like this. The wheel is spinning because it's trying to find its location. If you put it on the ground, uh, it's always gonna try to come back at the same position. So if you roll it forward, it's gonna go backward and backwards, it's gonna go forward. So that's why it's doing the weird motion because it's trying to, to see its, uh, its position. So the other sound that we have is also pretty funny, uh, funnier than the first one. So if we put it back in lock mode, and I spin the wheel, well, you, you can hear it. Theft detected, auto destruction in three, two, one. Kidding, calling the police now. So that's the second sound, you can see it's pretty nice. So the last thing that we need to look at is the infamous kickstand. We finally cracked it, so we're gonna look at it now. So the kickstand, we changed the way that we fix the rubber to it, basically. If you look on the other sample, it's absolutely destroyed. The side under it, it's, it's non-existent. You can see that now the rubber is wrapped around the kickstand completely. So before we had a bracket with two screws that were linking the rubber to the kickstand, the middle part. Uh, when you were putting pressure, like I'm doing now, like you can imagine the rubber, there's a lot of pressure being put on it, right? The whole weight of the scooter plus the torsion of it. Um, so it was like slipping and, and breaking on all the samples. So honestly, I didn't know what to do. And we tried this method. So we're wrapping the rubber around it from the molding process. So the rubber is almost imbricked inside the, the metal right now. 
That means that if you want to change this part of the kickstand, well, you can't. You need to change the whole kickstand. Again, the design is really good. You just need to have two screws on each side and you're going to change it. It's coming with all the spring already built in. So even if it ever come loose, well, it's super easy to change. Uh, and this should not be damaged. Uh, in our testing, I think we are folding it and unfolding it 10,000 times uh, on pavement. So it's more than good enough. Um, if we would take a closer look, well, this is uh, orange, again, uh, for our accent, but now this is orange too on the bottom. We did that for fun, but honestly, I don't like it because orange is going to get all dirty, right? You want this to be black to So with all the, the dust and everything, well, it won't look dirty, you know, or at least not as much as the orange. Um, so really happy about this one. It's also thicker than the last one. And again, I uh, know I show this in every video, but that kickstand is phenomenal. It's so strong, it can probably be two people on it. Uh, in our testing, we put, I think it's, we put something like 200 kilos on it and it's totally fine. So super happy about it, big brag. Again, this is a V4. There's gonna be a V5 with a major improvement and there's gonna be a V6 with an even bigger improvement. Uh, for sure, every one of you is gonna like it. It's what you've been asking for, I won't say too much. Um, for people who registered for the beta group, well, first of all, thank you. We wanted to do 100, 150 units. We got 350 uh, applicants for it, so that's great. We're gonna need to decide. Um, so if you think that you are a better candidate than someone else, well, please write in the section why you think so. There's a section dedicated to this. The version that the beta group's gonna receive, it's gonna be the V6. So you're gonna have all, all the latest improvement. And again, we are aiming for Production is going to happen in March, April, you know, so we should have it here by May, something like that. Again, thank you to all of you. If there's anything you don't like about the scooter, please tell it in the comments. Uh, again, this scooter was born from all your feedback, so we truly value them. And um, that's it for the V4.